Hello and welcome to the video. This is my first video on this model here. This is the He-Wing Ranger T1. Now I have had one of their other models, only one for other from He-Wing and that was the F-01. Uh, I got it in this kind of colour foam. Uh, my version was the Diatone Ripper that He-Wing actually make for Diatone. Now I love that little wing. It is incredible. But it only has two speeds. Fast and very very fast. So unfortunately it's not great for just exploring and I was really excited when I saw that they brought out this twin. Now I looked at the flying fish a week or so ago that is a great twin model and twins are such a great idea for FPV because of course it means that all the cameras and stuff are forward of the props and it also gives you some other advantages as well. Now this one has quite a few tricks up its sleeve above the flying fish. So I've finally got mine in. I ordered mine ages ago. It seems to have taken a very long time to arrive. So I'm sure if you've already um, watched a lot of YouTube videos, you've seen this in action. But I thought I would like to kind of talk about uh, how it comes in the box, show you how this one came. This is the PNP version. So this is the one that actually has the connectors on the roots of the wings. So both the wings and the tail are removable which for me is great. In terms of transport, I can just very easily take the tail off, just unplug the elevator servo, and away we go, and it makes it incredibly versatile. Now, I have already seen this fly. Not this one. Uh, I actually have to give a shout-out to my friend Adam, uh, who is as bad as influencing me as I am as influencing him, because he actually had one of these on our last flying day, and we flew it and it was just absolutely fantastic. Now he was trying it on 4S and it went like a bullet. I'm probably not going to go for 4S, I'm probably going to go for 3S. Uh, I don't want that level of performance but I have an idea and I'll come on to what my thoughts are about how I want to build this out in a minute. So I'm looking forward to having a model like this to go with my uh, smaller He-Wing F01, where that wing is just all about out and out speed, it has the DJI HD system in it, to have this for more kind of cruising, endurance, exploring style stuff, particularly as this one also has thought about putting things like a peanut action camera both in the bottom. Here, there's a recess for it, and um, there's optional landing gear, I'm sure you've seen it already. But also, I'm kind of interested in seeing if I can uh, have it here on the top as well, and that'll be great for kind of chase footage and filming to go along with the other filming quads that I tend to use a lot. Anyway, enough of me waffling on, let me jump on to the unboxing, show you what that's like, and go through the specs. So in terms of the packaging, the packaging looks and feels exactly like the packaging that the F-01 wing came in from He-Wing. It's the same kind of three box construction, everything is brilliantly packed up. Now there are some cute features on this that I'll draw your attention to. First of all is that it is set up for differential thrust, there's two EECs, one out in each of the wings and there are separate controls for those two ESCs. Now would I advise that you use differential thrust for something like I have? Probably not, we've played with it a little bit already here, me and my friend. And you have to be really careful about the tune for um, the rudder elements that will be mixed into the motors because it can crash your plane if you're not very careful. Uh, so be aware, but it is set up for differential thrust out the box. It's one of the best CG tests that I've seen on a model. We'll have a look at that again in a minute. The little battery cover holder, the little thing that clips it into position, is at the CG mark. So you can dangle it from that, and if it dangles at that position, you know you've got your CG spot on. As you can see, there is absolutely loads of room inside for the electronics. It's a little bit narrower the body than the F01, but there's easily enough room in here for the battery, flight controller, DJI stuff you want it, or a VTX. Interestingly, they have got LED and nav lights on the wingtips. We'll see those in a minute. Uh, there's the standard kind of green and red lights for standard orientation but there's also some addressable leds in the tips of the wings as well that you can set up using your flight controller to flash and do whatever you want to however there is also a control board for that too 
As I mentioned in the introduction, there is also the ability to mount a peanut or a go-to action camera in the belly and also in the nose. I really love to see that. I'm a huge fan of the peanut camera. It's the recording camera that I'm using the most at the moment. There is the optional foam landing gear, but the landing gear is relatively small. I am not going to be fitting it to mine because I expect the peanut will be at the nose. No rudder, but very large control surfaces. Uh, and there are removable wings on this PMP model, thanks to the fact that the wings are just in, held in place with clips and all the electrical connections are made as soon as you snap them in. Removable tail uh, with one cable for the elevator servo and a huge range of building options. You can build this in lots and lots and lots of different ways. In terms of the building, it isn't too tricky at all. There's actually instructions on the website that you can download. There isn't one in the package. It's even molded into the hard plastics which screws you need to use. So even if you don't load the manual and you try and build it, which is how I did it here, you will very quickly get to the end of the process and everything will fit together beautifully. Again, that's made a lot easier by the fact the electrical connectors are in the base of the wings for all of the stuff that's out there. That does mean that if you did then want to add something like a VTX out in the wing, uh, you're going to have to run separate cables, which will kind of mess that up a little bit. Power distribution board and the BEC is built into the base already. So whereas the 5 volts for things like the receiver would normally come from the ESCs, uh, that's actually been taken care of. That's a really cute thought. Again, room for a small FPV camera in the nose. I am debating where I'm going to put mine because I might want to put my peanut action camera above the nose. So I might still put my camera in the slot at the front. Uh, the way you build it is you do thread the elevator servo cable through the tail tube and then secure the tail tube to the rear tail assembly with the screws. The same screws also secure the vertical stabilizer that just clips into place and then it's held in place with one screw. I then centered the servo uh, for the elevator and connected the control rod. All the control rods, interestingly, are the same length in the pack, so you can't get them the wrong way around. Once that was done, then I just pushed in the control rod connections and did all those up, and that was a piece of cake. Very easy to do. Uh, don't forget to exercise all the control surfaces, though, before you do this, so they're looser for these smaller servos. I then had to plug the wing into the body because, of course, I needed access to the connector to move the servo into position, use the servo checker again to center the servo, and repeated the process for both wings exactly the same as I've done at the back. Not installed the props yet, but this is what the motors look like. The prop installation is the last thing I'm going to do. And then I slid the metal collet over the tail boom, slid the tail boom into position. There is a locating cutout so it can't rotate. And then you just do the collet up hand tight. And then that is the tail boom all fitted as well. The only little bit of glue that you need is for the hatch clip that goes through the main hatch that clips over the spar in the middle and also acts as the thing that you hold on to that it all kind of dangles from to check your central gravity. A little bit of hot glue and that's in place. Once all that stuff's done, then to actually put the final pieces together, really simple. You slide the carbon spar through the body and then you slide each of the wings onto the carbon spar and push them home until you hear a nice positive click. Once you've done that, then you've pretty much built it. It doesn't take long at all. It took me about 20 minutes, including taking the photos. My plans for this is I'll be adding a flight controller to it. Um, having seen this fly, I don't think you need a flight controller for it to fly, but I want the ability to have a return for home and things like that. I'm gonna put action cameras on this. So I'm gonna build mine out as a long flight time filming Explorer style rig that's capable of much slower speeds than my F01 wing from He Wing. So I'm going to add the DJI HD system to it, um, probably put the air unit at the back of the uh, cabin and then put the flight controller in front and the 3S lithium ion battery pack towards the nose. Sticking it all in there along with a Matek F411 WSC that I'll probably flash with iNav4, I can hang it beautifully and the central gravity is pretty much spot on. So I'm definitely not going to have to fight with this to get the central gravity where I need it to be. That 
really speaks to a really nice design from He Wing and some thought and testing about where all these pieces need to be to aid builders to get the central gravity in the right place. So that's how I intend to build mine. So do stay tuned. I'm going to be going through this in a couple of videos and we'll get it out there and give it a bit of a fly. See what the endurance is like. Uh, again, for me, I'm not bothered about the fact there is a rudder on the tail. Uh, this is going to fly very much like a lot of the wings that I love already. But you're going to have a little bit more stability because we have these con you know, uh, vertical and horizontal stabilizer out here at the back. But by the fact that I can actually undo this little nut at the back and take the tail off, that is going to be great for making it very easy to move about. So stay tuned. I'll see you uh, in the next video where we'll start actually building this thing out and putting all the electronics in. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.